It is day two of Gettysburg. Hood and McClaws are advancing on the far flank of the Union Army while fighting rages around Culp's Hill. Uh, the roughest ground you will probably see, <laughs> Devil's Den, a renowned, renowned spot as well as the peach orchard what is up everybody welcome back to some more gettysburg from acw the hardcore american civil war mod for napoleon total war and we are on as you as i just was saying day two of the gettysburg series so this is going to be hood in mcclaw's attack on the union position you have of course little and big round top here um not really positioned up yet and, of course, already we are starting to see some firing from the 20th. Holding this area. Peach Orchard getting held as well. Um, we do have, you know, the, the third core. I mean, look at these guys already to hold this position. You have some of the coolest looking at the 114th. Got some drip to them. Um, this was, of course, another 2v2. So, carrying on, if you've not seen the other videos, I encourage you to go look at them. We have Buford's Hold on the first day, Cemetery Ridge. You have uh, Day 2 on the other side, Culp's Hill getting attacked by the Confederates. And now, of course, we have Little and Big Round Top, Devil's Den, which this here is Devil's Den. We're supposed to simulate Devil's Den in, like, the Peach Orchard over here. I think it's over here, actually, uh, being attacked. And uh, if you've seen the movie Gettysburg, this is where the 20th Main held. They held this high ground, which, I mean... Look at how much you could see from here. You could see the entirety of the flank here. Granted, of course, getting down into the trees, it'd be kind of hard to see anything. Um, I do have the reserve here. <clears throat> and yes, the 20th main is in this fight. Let's see, here they are right here. Very nice. They have some of the greatest stats. Huge unit, 501 men. And they are ready to roll. We, of course, have more reserves pushing over here as well. Artillery pushing up. We need to take some of this high ground to help hold. While the Union kind of fight a... They're fighting a battle of sorts. They have got quite the massive Confederate attack coming right at them. Already, right over here, you have Georgia boys starting to pour in some volleys here. They have a nice, uh, fence. More and more reserves over here. The Texas. Texas Infantry. So we have several Texas regiments. Like I said, this is all Hood's division. Uh, historically, Hood did not like attacking. He wanted to go all the way to the right. Man, I didn't realize there was another hill over there. I don't know if that's actually realistic or not, but... Yeah, they're obviously massed up pretty far on this right flank. Um, it was a tough one before. But we actually put this one before, but this time... And I believe I have artillery almost set up here. It takes forever to mobilize anything up onto this ridge. Um, I tried to get my guns up there, but... It just honestly wasn't, wasn't doing too well. And I realized... It yes, says sir. six guns, but... Two of these guns don't even have men on them. I don't even know why they have them. But yeah, the Confederates are pushing on this flank here. This fourth is getting really outflanked here. got some hilly ground to defend um and of course confederates got some good ground of their own with defense but yeah day two was a vicious fight that honestly could have gone either way if the confederates had won this one who knows what that would have done uh, but the, the rule is, basically, um, we cannot let them push us back from this road. This road is going towards the flank. So if they go all the way into this road, and we are able to defend this area, or this area, any of this, um, we lose. So uh, we, I guess we'll see what happens, you know? We will see who wins, and you guys can be the judge of if it was 
done properly or not if the Union held or the Confederates managed to take it. But a very close one, of course, a very long one. This one was an hour, over an hour. An hour and ten minutes, I believe. So, you know, uh, get comfortable here because it's going to take a while. We do have, of course, the first division um, set up, still defending this side. That was one of the rules. They couldn't just leave it. Um, the rest of the Confederates here not pushing up yet. They're still waiting. They're still waiting for that order to be given. The artillery hasn't even fired yet. These guys are a reserve force. They will be pushing up later on in the fighting. The only uh, combat that's really happening is, of course, on this side by the Devil's Den. And you can see the Union ooh, plastering this ridge with artillery. Um, Devil's Den definitely getting hit pretty hard. The 4th is already breaking. Took some pretty heavy losses by the fence as uh, the the Alabama boys. And I don't have reinforcements coming up. They are still marching me. They're almost here, but they are not getting up quick enough. And with all the artillery plastering this hill, it's going to be a rough one for the uh, Union to hold. And the Confederates knew exactly where to push for this one. I will, I will say that. They definitely knew exactly where they needed to push on the flank, um, knowing the ground and where, you know, where the Union placement is. The only problem is Devil's Den really isn't as it should be. I mean, if you've actually been to Devil's Den, you'll know it's got a lot more. I mean, there's some forces here in Devil's Den fighting now. Our artillery is lighting it up. I bet you couldn't get guys in these rocks. Some skirmishers, the sharpshooters, the sharps. Rifles, but yeah, they're gonna fall back here. That's a small unit not as happy probably about this uh, They are gonna push back into the tree line. There's not a lot of reserves here, but They're probably gonna get hit pretty hard Momentarily uh, the nice thing is there is a fence line and trees which are gonna defend but the Confederates are pushed over a lot of troops and It's unfortunate that this whole army can't push over here um, We made that rule which honestly Better to even attack this. These reserves would have been really well used over here. But, you know, the rules are there for a reason. Because this will be really easy to hold with all the reserves being able to push over and defend this line. This line, you know, getting hit really hard, not having a reserve. Um, I'm finally getting troops up. You know, these guys getting in position. Look at the 44th. Got some uh, drippy uniforms here. I think my artillery is just starting to fire. And look at the position they're gonna have to fire at. Let's see where they're gonna fire. Going straight down the road, as you can see, a lot of units pushing directly towards us. I can see them. Yep, going straight for them. Okay, that's a terrible miss. What kind of a shot is that? This B battery is. Kind of failing here. And the better artillery is really pounding this whole hill as they're going to keep pushing forward here. Um, still nothing here, but... Yeah, Confederates really being aggressive here. And, I mean, I only have three regiments. Nothing really. I mean, the 20th Main is going for the flank. They're right here on the back side. They're going to take up this left flank. I thought I was trying to take this hill, but I, I wasn't going to make it up there in time. Um, they were way closer. They have units all along here. They'll march up here, and I would be meeting them halfway, if anything. Maybe I should have done it, you know, but I decided not to. I decided just to hold this part of the hill. They're going straight down, and now there is some Confederates that are breaking. The artillery is finally getting a little bit more in range. Yes, as the Alabama boys are pushing forward, Confederates starting to take Devil's Den. A lot of Confederates pushing up. In fact, they even have made it all the way to this fence line here. Getting very close to the Union. 
line, and now they have a fence kind of for some uh, shelter here. The senior line has not budged, but we do have more Confederates now attacking or advancing here, I should say. Oh, yeah, look at that. Nah, not going to get a good shot, unfortunately. It's too laggy. Too many troops on the battlefield. Ooh, nice volley. The Union volleyed this unit point and blank and got a nice rack up of kills maybe some artillery hit him too but now uh you know they're still managing to hold for now although they actually are falling back i'm surprised i think they maybe, maybe he held i don't know maybe it could have worked maybe he's falling back because of this flank near devil's den but now the rest of fifth core the fifth core is now moving i'm pushing troops around here to use this road to then get up to defend this left flank and then I'm pushing more into the center. Hopefully, I should have put, maybe I should have pushed him over here, but um, for now, we are just getting more artillery up here. I'm gonna put as much artillery up on this hill as possible. As the Union definitely starting to push up. Even they're even getting a flank on Devil's Den. I'm gonna probably have to support my ally here. These guys are gonna get some easy kills on the Union line. You can see him just sitting here. And these guys are just right there. A volley away. And they're going straight in on this line. And that's going to be a little bit of a rough one. And you can see here that uh, the Union definitely have been pushed back quite a lot I mean they have this whole line here and they do not anymore all our artillery start raining in. the volume of this battle is starting to go up for sure a uh, ton of Confederates pushing here and uh, they're seen advancing towards the peach orchard but they're also advancing on this angle here and that's a problem there's nothing to defend this line there is a big old gap right here between this and this unit so the Union now pushing forward, hopefully to fill up that gap, but the Confederates are getting real close here. And there is a lot of them. Lots and lots of them. We have now pushed up to engage. More Texans now pushing up the 4th, 5th, and 1st. Pushing forward, this Union flank having to fall back just because this flanking volley. But like I said, I am getting troops up here to hopefully start uh, applying pressure to the Alabama boys. Stop them from being able to uh, cut in on the Union flank. Um, you can see the Confederates are taking some losses here. Man, they're taking some real hurt. This battle is in full swing of volleys getting exchanged. Oh, and now these units get some volleys. As the Confederates start advancing. Oh, yes. Having more reserves pushing forward here. These guys are hopefully going to stop this flank the Confederates are making on the forest. But it still doesn't seem like a whole lot. They need more reserves to push here in the center to kind of defend this Confederate line. And you can see some of the, Confe the Confederates are starting to break a lot of Union. I mean, they just have way more troops here. The firepower is telling. We do have a reserve unit, but, man, they are getting hit pretty hard here. More Confederates also showing up on this side. More Alabama Regiment. Another Alabama Brigade. Push forward, but I am getting more and more reserves up. I should not have pushed back here. I don't know why I did. I should have kept putting pressure on them. That probably would have been a better idea. 
then falling back. Uh, I don't know why. That, looking at this, I should have. I should have kept the pressure on. I was doing fine. If anything, push the side back. Keep pressuring this left leg. That's what I should have done. I had the I had the 20th main. I get to push them to right here and start to get, exerting a lot of pressure. Maybe they would have pushed on the flank a little more, but it would have diverted forces away other side of the battlefield. Who knows? Well, here we go. See, now the Confederates, I mean, they're kind of attacking the Peach Orchard, but they're kind of seeming more focusing right here on this side, and they are really doing a lot of damage to the Union line. Yeah, there seem to be quite a lot of Confederates focused in this area. Artillery is a focusing on this Peach Orchard, it looks like. A lot of reserves. I mean, they can definitely throw up some more and, you know, Union will have a better time holding. But there's even more Confederates now starting to push out of the trees. They're going to attack on this direction. It's going to be a rough one for the Union, defending-wise. Been on the back foot, I feel like, most battles, except for the first day. The first day felt like the Union were in a better place any of these other days but yeah the Union are breaking in the woods so unfortunately it is uh, gonna be a very slow and painful death for the Union in this tree line better start to really push forward a lot of forces here This Confederate force is really putting a lot of pressure. All that artillery doing an excellent job of hitting. And unfortunately, just terrain-wise, our gun's taking a forever to get up here, unfortunately. Uh, some of it is starting to make its appearance here. Getting some of the guns up. I'm trying to set them up quickly so they can start supporting this uh, attack or this, this retreat that the Union is making. But this goes back to the whole Sickles stretching his line out way too far. I mean, he really pushed forward way too much, and his poor man had to deal with that. I'm still standing here, man. In hindsight, man, this was a stupid idea just to stand there. I should have been pushing. I don't know. I was being too defensive. I wasn't being aggressive enough. I know now for future for future battles, you know, I know exactly what you need to do as the Union, I think. Yeah, Union now entirely falling back along the side. You can see units are starting to break, but yeah, everything's starting to fall back. Artillery really pounding this position. Entirely falling back here. And match me, these guys, they're just standing here. They engage for a little bit, but they are just watching. They're just here to watch for now. And they see retreating Union forces. All these regiments falling back. I actually have some here. I was going to help hold this flank. Um, oof. All these units are just getting torn apart. Yes, 
We have a retreating battle here. Units standing in the in the wheat field. a deadly well yeah that was pretty deadly artillery shell dropping in on these masses of union infantry trying to get across falling back wow this unit broke that fast that's crazy that is crazy yeah so you can see the confederates have definitely pushed the union almost entirely back here uh so yeah our center looking pretty weak here however i was noticing there's tons of confederates just sitting here and I was almost guaranteeing there was plenty of forces pushing up this way or just waiting to then push on my flank. I was expecting them to attack here. So obviously I'm going to start pushing forward all my units for the most part to hold this side. I, I was totally expecting an attack here. Um, honestly, in hindsight, I probably should have relocated some more artillery to right here maybe. Um, this is a good position, but if the in in infantry get close, they're going to just shoot your artillery crews and kill them. I'm relocating artillery. It's really hard to get them to fit on this hill. It was a nightmare to figure that out. And a couple more Union forces trying to get away from this advancing Confederate line. Probably not going to happen. The trees are pretty slow. Artillery is trying to soften up this Confederate advance. And the Confederates have taken the Peach Orchard. Uh, that's no surprise there. <laughs> and now they're going to start advancing onto the Union position, which is falling back down this road. Artillery is just tearing into this line. basically a union defensive um which is a change up most civil war battles were the confederates being defensive and the union attacking so it's interesting to see the difference you know the union were defending every single day under 55th these guys are gonna get some action let me tell you The next phase of this battle is about to start. The Union have managed to get away with only three lines breaking. Four, I guess. Four lines breaking here. Not too terrible. The Confederates had some that broke, but they have come back. So. Oh yeah, that four artillery crew got stuck in the house. And uh, once it is, it is done. It cannot. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. You can nothing you can do whatsoever. You gotta watch out for that. So watch out for houses. If you get artillery in them, they will get stuck and permanently be stuck in there. Now my artillery was all sort of focus here. Granted, I only had a couple guns, but all the guns I had so far focusing this area down in fact all of our artillery was we need to try to whittle down as many of the confederates as possible they have quite a lot of troops left and a lot of fresh reserves here
artillery trying to split. Oh my goodness, nice shot by the artillery. So, trying to kill as many of these units as possible. That is a secret. Now, you can see a little bit. I saw some troops going into the forest here. And that's when I knew they were definitely going to hit me. They were going to hit this side. They have to hit this side. Um, yeah, they have to. They just have to. And the problem is the tree line is so tough. With the amount of forces I have, it's not a lot of reserves. And the tree line itself is really, really tough to move troops. They take forever to actually get into position. That was the only frustrating part of the entire thing. So basically, they take forever to shoot. Because they're all trying to march position and the tree line makes them take forever. Uh, which is something you have to be aware of. If you're going to fight in this, you need your troops already in formation. And switching out reserves is rough. And almost, you almost have to, you almost can't do it. Because you're just going to take losses to the troops that are pulling out and the troops that you're putting in to replace them. Both sides are going to take heavy losses. It's better just to let the, the unit route, I feel like. Uh, I think it would have done better for me just to do that. Let the unit route, and then take on the next one. We do have the Union holding now. You can barely see the Confederates. Actually, the Confederates can see the Union a little better. You see the Union are starting to form up here. This is for at all. They're going to form up in this forest, trying to use the fence line. The Union are getting attacked as the Confederates push through this wheat field. And now all of my guns, guys, are being brought to bear on this wheat field. Every gun I had begins splashing in here. I, need, I wanted to save my ally as best as possible. Stop. Repulse this attack. Although he had a lot more troops than I did, so honestly, I probably didn't need to worry about it too much. Oh, nice hit with the artillery. Oh, we got the officer. Dang. This fight is in full swing here. Holy cow, look at my artillery just... It is just hitting this poor line with everything it has. And keep in mind, the guns you can see here. So we have, this one's almost set up. We have this gun, this gun this gun all firing right here these guys are doing credit they're holding as best they can to the Confederate line still holding. The Union line seems to be holding. Get 
can't even see him. What are they shooting at? Oh, what a hit. What a hit. Now artillery is starting to soften up this position, so I am falling back. Obviously, don't want to lose my guys to artillery. The rocks provide a little bit more cover here. And you can see, okay, well, this artillery is still trying to get in position, trying to get it to work. But look at this, we're starting to break them just by pure... Man. We are really hitting this wheat field. There's going to be no wheat to be harvested from this field this year. The Union have fallen back across here, so they are giving a total retreat order here just because of this massive attack here. So they're falling out of the tree line. Uh, the Confederates still standing in the sweet field. They have not pushed this line back as there's just a reserve sitting here. I'm sure there's plenty of reserves back here too, yeah. And artillery is going to be setting up to kind of defend this position. Um, unfortunately, a lot of retreating. Oh, this general just died or retreated. I, of course, am still waiting for the assault. I know that is going to come up. It's coming. And we have more artillery now setting up. It's got to navigate betwixt the rocks. I have more that set up a little bit lower down. It looks very weird because the horses and all, but, you know. I also have the center. I pushed up some of my units here. 155th. Forming up to help out with this fight. Let's get a volley from the 155th, shall we? Well, there we go. So we have some units trying to flank here, trying to put some more pressure on them. Um, yeah, still, still not an entire bunch, but we do have artillery kind of getting very close to this position, but barely within reach. You can have uh, are standing out now in the field. These Confederates have pushed even further here, guys. Even further. is doing quite well though still slamming into this wheat field man they have taken some heavy losses so we're refusing to give up Give my guys, there's guns over here too that are firing all training in this one area. And boy, you can see the effect that this has. And we broke another one. This guy will come back though. Oh yeah, so here we go. We see the first of the attack here. The Confederates coming out of the trees. Alabama. 
And you can see here, the Georgia boy is also here. He marched all the way up along this hill. I kind of suspecting that. So at least, at least I was prepared. You know, at least I was prepared. I should have gotten this 146 New Jersey in the center here with the 20th Main. I feel like I could have done better there than all on the flank. It, it takes forever to march up, guys. So it just takes forever. As you will see. Give him a fight. Give him a volley. Sir, I fear your general is in mortal peril, sir. But the assault begins. Now that this fight is in full swing, man, the Confederates actually are getting just destroyed in this wheat field. Not able to really hold very well. The thing is, my artillery is better suited for this shooting than for shooting at this side. And that was the problem. I needed to have my infantry further down to hold so that the Confederates couldn't push towards my guns. Um, well, like I said, if I play this battle again, that's probably what I'll do if I play as this side. I probably won't play this side. I've played it twice. Been on the hill twice. But yeah, holding this whole line, pushing it out a little bit more. I'm in the trees for now, but like I said, they can start marching this direction and hit my artillery piece. Hundred fifty fifth, still fighting strong. So be holding well on this flank as well. Union now falling back. Still stubbornly holding this side. I mean, the artillery is doing a lot of work here for the Confederate or for the Union. Our artillery is doing a beautiful work here. I should have kept firing. However, the Union, I'd switch targets because they marched down to threaten our entire flank. Let me tell you, it was <laughs> so many guns trained on one line here. Now, I am pushing the flank a little bit more trying to wrap around encompasses the Georgia boys but they are pushing forward getting the Texans up Twentieth Main still in reserve That was a nice shot. Whose guns are those? Forcing back the uh, Confederate force that was trying to advance here just because the artillery has such a beautiful shot on this hill. But you see now the artillery is quieted down in the wheat field because we had to divert those two other places to help out on the other sides of the fighting. And here they come, going for the guns. Very unfortunate. And the other problem was, the lines I had here, pretty small, some of them were at least. These guys probably should get up and start fighting soon. beautiful these guys getting 
beat down to size with 146th. Actually, I'm focusing a lot on this one side. I probably shouldn't have had so much on this left flank. But for now, I seem to be winning. Bit of a gap here in the line, though. I'm sure now pushing up, trying to get an angle here as they're going to start going for my guns. My men are starting to waver. I probably could have pushed them further up on the hill. Yes, sir. Get a little bit more of a tree advantage, tree line advantage. I'm pushing up my 44th, getting them ready. My 20th main is going to get ready to reinforce this line. Probably should have waited on that too. Over on this side, things are going all right. Artillery still, the folks, this line is holding for now. But there is a, there, there's not a whole lot of Confederates engaged, which made me think they were pushing either in this, this area or they were back here pushing this way. Either way, it was not encouraging to see. I have the smallest army out of everybody, I believe. Now we're getting the 44th. Taking the place of another unit. This unit is getting decently whittled down. 40 men already knocked out from it. There we go. The 140th is pushing out to take a flank here. They're going to hopefully start peppering down the Confederate flank. Let's see this flank. Or let's see this volley. Come on. Fire! Fire! Or not, you know. One problem is the rocks actually block some of the field of view, so not all the guys were firing at once, which made it that much more interesting. Now the Confederates are seeing the threatening flank I'm putting out, so they push out, but of course I immediately switch all my guns to start hitting on them. All the guns to bear. Union falling back a little bit more. They have a nice defensive position, but um, this this attack is getting a little more serious now. My units are just really small. These are some small brigades. Well, here come even more Confederates. You can see they are, I'm pretty sure, so I'm pretty sure their plan was to actually attack this flank. It wasn't really truly, I mean, I'm the weak, I'm the weaker army. I have the less, the least amount of men compared to my ally who has a large amount. Um, and I'm pretty sure they were going to push everything they could at me. Here we go. The 20th main is pushing up here, but this is why the trees are really bad. See, they are just standing here getting shot. Um, and uh, they're on two different sides of this rock just getting royally screwed here. They're going to be a target for a very long time before they even get a chance to fire. It was, it was a very frustrating thing to see happen just because this unit could do so much damage but they're already taking losses. Only six so far or something like that. But they're going to take way more here before they even get a chance to fire. As, you know, a little bit of a delay unfortunately. Very expensive, very good unit. And I think I may have wasted it. I should have waited, maybe. Or just put it right here where there wasn't, like, pathfinding issues. Because, oh my gosh, the pathfinding issues. But everywhere else, we're doing pretty well. In fact, we're even shredding up this Confederate line. Uh, definitely, they are getting some hurt. And we break them. Very excellent breaking of them. Oh, these poor, these guys can get such a nice volume, but you can see they're just going to get whittled down. They're probably, gonna, I think they lost about 100 men, so they're only at 400 before they even got a chance to even do anything. It was, it was a, it, yeah, I'm going to stop watching it because it's just going to, it's going to remind me how frustrating that was, the pathfinding at least. But uh, over here, still dead even. Neither side seems to really be making a whole lot of headway. 
I'm starting to put a little more pressure on this Confederate line. Trying to stop them from being able to push up and flank because they are pushing forward. And they have a lot more reserves pushing up here. They have... And basically, in order to win, they just have to push up and take me out. We are starting to win on this side. Um, which, at that point, I could have easily just kept one unit here and pulled the other two back towards the center. Is 20th main firing yet? Have you guys started firing yet? Will you guys have fire? I threw up the uh, 83rd Pennsylvania to kind of soak up. It, it, it's it's a lame thing to do, but I used him to soak up ammunition. These guys automatically will target this unit just as much as this, which will cause this unit not to uh, die so fast, you know. But here we go. Confederates are pushing even more and more forces. And they have some reserves over here still, but they're pushing over even more and more to this side to take up a little round top. Finally, the 20th main is getting some volleys off. But still, they are gonna they're gonna take some heavy losses here. Going against two. And this unit could really uh, I could have done this a lot better. This unit could have dug in here and dug in here, and this unit could have pushed up here, and I could I could have played this better. I could have always played it better. see where the artillery is still firing all of it but now these guys are really close to the guns and they are super super um yeah these guys are losing so many man but i'm saying like these guys the cannons are really really um like they can get killed really easily by bullets so not the most encouraging thing to see we're definitely given that what for the confederates what for but they have even more reserves pushing forward more of Hood's division. One forty-six is such a small unit. Unfortunately, taking some heavy losses. I do their best. I sort of break them, but with plenty more reserves, I don't have a ton, and they just take forever to push up. This is when you uh, put a you can get regiment here, maybe on the 20th main, shrink this side and push this massive unit up here. I think that would have been a little bit better. I'm always going to be reevaluating it. You can get our falling back from those woods, took some heavy losses, still not going too well. More and more Confederates pushing over to this left side. They have a lot more pushing up here. I am going to basically pull back a reserve, push forward the 146, and uh, try to get some shots on this Georgia. Let me try to push this flank, really pressure it. Been quite a slaughter on both sides here on this hill. Your men have been routed, sir. Sixteenth is broken as well. Oh man. Yeah, this is just. And these guys are in the trees, so you know they have some good shelter here. Oh, 
please fire. Oh my goodness. They just tore apart these poor Georgia. Okay, why are these guys... Did I push them forward? I can't remember pushing... I don't remember pushing them forward, but I guess I did. Lots of ways. You should stop. I shouldn't be moving them so much. Don't move your troops in these massive battles. They take forever to fire again. A rule. As you can see, they're at 300. They lost over 200 men, and they still aren't firing. There's some distance created here. My 155th formed up on this fence line to help out. Just imagine being this battle being like, man, I don't want to, you know, still be in this. Now, we do have the uh, artillery hitting this crew and breaking them. There's a huge unfortunate, the beginning of uh, me losing my artillery pieces. Heavy losses here, but these guys are still fighting. Still fighting. And causing these guys to waver. And we broke them. So that's when I you gotta start pushing. Start really, really pushing here. Uh, more and more reserves though. They have so much set up here. Unfortunately, my 20th main is getting just focused down. Should have pushed this out a little bit more and pushed this unit forward a little bit more. Started really trying to pressure this side. Even pushing this guy a little bit closer, I bet you I could have gotten some. But you can evaluate it when you're not, you know, multitasking on multiple sides of the field. Another crew breaks. You see that the bullets just flying. It's just knocking them down so fast. But we are starting to break a little bit more of them using that artillery piece. We are starting to break more, but I mean, how, however many I break, another one takes its place. No matter what. They just kept, they kept funneling all the reserves in, all the reserves. I only have so many men. I only have so many men to uh, defend. There's definitely a lot here, but they aren't really seem to be focusing too much. They have one long line with a couple units in reserve. The majority of the fight, the majority of their attack seems focused here. We are breaking them though, taking out yet another, routing another, but it doesn't even matter. They just have so many extras ready to take. Now, look at this, the 20th main, and they're so weakened. They're holding as best they can, but I mean, they're just getting out shot. Fresh units just keep pouring in. And I have basically a bunch of, I have one fresh, but I have like very tiny units left. I don't have a whole lot. Actually, this uh, 60 seconds should have pushed in here. Oh yeah, get a nice point blank volley. Both sides actually getting point blank volleys on the other. See, I'm starting to cave. I keep routing units, but they keep coming, having fresh units, pouring up to uh, reserve. And my 20th main is down to 180 men. They have been literally, probably all three of these units have been given command fire orders on this one unit. I, I would have bet. Like, the 20th main is pretty, uh, they have like a scare tactic. They have a scare, they have inspire, they have a bunch of stuff. I should have pulled them back right there. Um, 
But I didn't have anything. <laughs> I didn't have anything. I have one unit that I am pushing up defense here because the Union or the Confederates are pushing up here. But yeah, there goes the 20th Main. And uh, do I have a whole lot left to really fill up this gap left by the 20th Main? Over here now, the fighting has uh, basically ensued once more. Both sides seem to be holding quite well. Both sides, I mean, actually the better seem to be having some breakage. Um probably should have said something to my ally like hey I'm getting hit pretty hard and I have no reserves I, I probably should have communicated a little bit better because I definitely was getting hit pretty hard <laughs> and I don't have a whole lot left if anything I guess I could have fallen back even more into the tree line Let me see if I get... Yes, sir. Yeah, it's definitely, uh... There's not even a fly bear left, I'm realizing. I guess there's one here, huh? My things are starting to go down a hill very, very, very quickly for me. Artillery is doing an excellent job hitting this position. Artillery crew does break. And they're starting to really exert a lot of pressure here. Things are looking a little bit nasty. Things are looking a little bit worrisome. 15 minutes remaining and we have to hold, but I definitely am beginning to, uh, well I was before, but definitely I'm thinking now like my lines are just breaking very quickly. They have 300, 250 man units. And most of my units are down to almost 100 men, except for the ones in the left flank. Most of these are down to 100 men. I have a couple that are like, you know, a couple that are here and they're holding quite well. But it definitely doesn't seem to be uh, running very smoothly. Considering, man, they're just... Uh, 
They are just pushing me back. That's a picture though, isn't it? How drastic the uphill is. Things are starting to cave, guys. Remember, they have to get to here. And if we lose the defense of this to where they can push down this road, it is a loss for us. Um, and that's exactly what they're doing. And they're starting to fold this flank. Oh, man. They ran that soon? I don't remember them running that soon. Man, I think it's artillery probably that focused them down, isn't it? This artillery crew is uh, getting hit pretty hard here. Is now I'm starting to crumble here on several different points. They're starting to crest the hill. Your men have been routed, sir. And we have all very few reinforcements left. We're trying to divert more and more forces to this whole side. And it's just a stalemate. The Confederates have gotten into the fence line. Not a whole lot stopping them now. Here we go. They're sending in the bayonets. Something that the Confederates are going to do much better at. Just, you know, by nature of being Confederates, I feel like. And they're going straight up. This had a ton of chevrons. This 44th in New York. But, you know, there's only so much that they can uh, do here. So I'm going to Pour in the 20th main. Give him a fire order, which of course didn't work. So now, bayonets. Give them one last spire to keep them in the fight. If I broke them here, I think I could have held, but unfortunately, such an exhausted, very tired 20th main that break. And uh, this is kind of the catalyst. That started the mass route here. As the Confederates start mounting the hill, our flank is going to start getting exposed. There's just so many of them. Your men have been routed, and they're breaking over here, but they don't seem to really care because, you know, they're pouring all the reserves over this hill. It's 142nd, along with the 9th, holding as best they can. They're holding that flank. Got the Confederates still making a brave attack here. Union are holding them back quite well. Cannot wait to see Pickett's charge. It's gonna be awesome. 
playing it, the more seeing it is going to be. My, I still have this unit here, the 155th. Oh, they're about to get flanked. See, I wasn't paying attention at all. I was way over here trying to save this hill. Um, because I only have a couple units here, but yeah, the, the Confederates are just continually pushing. They're wavering and they're tired, so you never know, I guess. Uh, we still have to hold this if you want to win. And there's nothing here. So we got to hold this road now. <laughs> With whatever we have left. Oh man, I'm getting shot in the flank. I didn't realize that these guys are even shooting. What are they doing? Interesting. I didn't realize they weren't shooting at all. Holy cow, there's a unit right here. Wow. Alright, well, musket bug, I guess, was really bad on that side. And they're not even shooting. What is that? Alright, so we're still gonna hold this side. Things aren't looking too good, though. There's a lot of troops pushing over that side. My, uh... The 9th has broken, but the 146 is still there. Um, we're withdrawing to the stone fence. They have effectively taken a little round top. And uh, starting to spill over into this road. We have a barely anything there to kind of hold. Oh, they finally fire. Oh, good. About time. Man, they were standing there for a long time doing nothing. We're still holding by this, this warehouse. Some units in here pouring in some fire. You better have pushed across the grove here. Trying their best to force back the Confederates. A lot of reserves are pushing over here to kind of cover this center. If these reserves can get here, we can hold this. We gotta hold it though. I have a cheeky little uh, artillery crew. Running over here, hopefully to kind of wear it in the side. They're a little bit, they're wavering a little bit here. We do have some Union counterattacking. Giving them the cold steel. Oh, that didn't work. My artillery crew is firing here, trying to wear them down. We still hold this side. We barely hold this side. <laughs> I have 118th. I'm setting up a reserve line here along this fence. We gotta hold this road. I have a one tiny unit of 72 men here. Maybe trying to, you know, hit this side. But things are not looking good. This this unit is holding against three brigades. Which is crazy. Awesome, oh, beautiful volleys here. Throwing back the Confederates. This 155th has been holding this entire time, guys. Doing a beautiful job of it. Throwing up even more reserves here. Oh, he's had to hold this fence, I feel like. If he just held this fence, it'd be perfect. But things are looking very worrisome as the Union uh, the Confederates are. They're very tired, though, guys. Most of these guys are very tired. There's a couple fresh units. My artillery is still firing here. Ooh, I think we have a interesting little formation here. Oh wow, interesting. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> Both sides are giving command orders to shoot at the other. <laughs> Got some interesting stuff. You see the Union are diverting more and more forces here. We have some reserves to hold this line, guys. We have only a couple minutes left. Um, we actually have some units that start coming back over here. Um, still hold this line, but barely. We have some forces. My 118th still holding my artillery crews getting charged. But yeah, see, units are starting to come back. I mean, they're tired, but they're starting to come back. We have to hold this. 
I mean, the rest of Blink, he's actually holding barely. Barely holding. The better seem pretty well off. Our artillery is still firing. We're getting more and more artillery to set up here. See his guns set up, firing, really starting to hurt the enemy. This 155th is just holding brilliantly. These guys are chads. Such chads. They have some brothers. New Yorkers next to Pennsylvania's. <laughs> this unit is still holding somehow. Um, Confederates looking pretty good though. They're pushing up a lot more reserves. We have four minutes and 22 seconds left. The Union are pulling back even more on this fence. Um, they just got to barely hold the side. That's all. We need all the rest of the reserves, which we have right here. Pushing up. It's going to be a close, tough one. Um, more and more troops start coming back, so I'm pouring them up to this fence. We can start harassing this corner here. That's exactly what we have to do. We have to harass this unit. Force them to uh, deal with us, because they are... There's they're fresh units here, but... I don't know if the morale is wavery or what, but there's some tired units here. More fresh units, winded. They're starting to get across the road. Things are looking very, very bad. Indeed. But all of my army came back. Look at all of this. Even some of my allies' army came back. And so, we have something to fight with. It's exhausted and needs to rest up. It's tired, but it's something. And I'm gonna try to use it here to harass this competitor line. Cause look at this, they're starting to break here a little bit. Now, of course, you know, losing even more and more. We have some Confederate, some more Union soldiers that can push up to this fence line. But we have pushed back the first attack, more troops coming, but we do have some that can now counter attack and push over. So we have a lot of troops right here. Some of them, most of them are tired, some of them are fresh. Most of them are tired, though. But we're gonna need them to counterattack. <laughs> like now, we have two minutes, 38 seconds left. Oh, my 155th. Oh, oh, man. They've held so long. They're winded, they're so tired. They're about to break. They're wavering now. So many Confederates attacking. Yeah, they're gonna break. We have this line held. We have more Union pushing across here. And uh, two minutes left. So here is the debacle, guys. We have two minutes left, right, in this battle. We discussed you have to take this, which I don't know if it's this or it's this. I don't know, because this road goes all the way along here. We couldn't decide who would won. Obviously, the Confederates made a decisive victory here, pushed me off this hill, started swinging down here. I still have a line here. He still has a line here. It's a very weak line. They're exhausted. Most of them are exhausted. Some of them are tired. Um, more troops here, but they're behind the stone wall. I have my general here resting them up. He has forces along here. Artillery set up as well. Who won, do you think? Who do you think won this one? Because there's a minute and 22 seconds left, and spoilers, nothing happens. We just kind of sit here. No more troops really break that I can think of. And in fact, um, map out my allies, troops started coming back. More or less of them started coming back. He had some fresh troops. So he's resting up troops as quickly as possible. If they had more time, do you think they could have pushed us off of this hill? Off this little road and taken possession of this? Um, we couldn't decide. The Confederates were saying that they think they won because they took this. Uh, we were saying, well, you know, we still technically have troops all the way around this. You haven't broken us here. I would say it was a stalemate because they did what they were supposed to for the most part and we did what we were supposed to do for the most part. Both of us had some hiccups and both of us didn't totally, totally stick it up 100%. Uh, our goal 100% of the of the time. Uh, and these troops are, I mean, there's some, well, there's some winded troops there. There's some active troops here, some tired. They have some good cover though. We still have artillery support here. I, I don't know guys, I don't know who wins. I don't know if this is just a stillmate. I would I would defer to saying this is a stillmate. I would say that neither side won. Um, 
the Commanders did more than they did definitely that one day. Um, when obviously the line held along here. But instead it just held back here. You know, I don't know. You guys can decide in the comments. I'll leave it up to you guys. I'm not going to say if one, one over the other. Some very large units here, but yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say who won because I don't know. I don't know. Both sides have very, very good arguments to why their side should be declared the victor. Let's look at the kills here. You can see my 140th New Yorkers did some work. The 20th main, obviously, no surprise there, 342 kills next. Uh, I think they'd have gotten way more if they'd been able to push up and not die and lose, like, you know, almost 100 men before even shooting. But, you know, it happens. It, it happens. And you can see the kills I got. Um, some of my units only got a couple, but, I mean, some of these guys really, really small units didn't have a lot of kills. I had a lot of smaller units, almost, like, not even, not even 100, no, two, not even 200 men. But, um, you can see here the numbers on the army. I had the smallest army. Next was uh, Hood, who was attacking me. And then next was Longstreet, who then sickles with 10,000. Uh, Matt Bob was here. He only killed... Oh, he got 37. 39, 39, and 28. So um, we definitely did not do as effective. Now, part of this was them running down a bunch of Union. I know they're running down to make sure they didn't come back. So I wonder how much of that was that and how much of it was just the kills in general. But either way, a very bloody day, second day. This would bring the end to the second day. And, uh, well, today I'll be playing Pickett's Charge and then probably recording that tomorrow, which I am super excited for Pickett's Charge. Pickett's Charge, one of the most renowned charges in history, in the world of history, just because how brave the Confederates were charging across a massive open field against artillery and infantry. And it was the deciding factor in Gettysburg. And we will see. Maybe the Confederates can pull it off. Maybe. So... Uh, who you'll see in the next video. So, anyway, guys, thank you all so much for joining me. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, and I will catch you all in another video.